are created, but they just be closed off by the food they are consuming and also by the input that's going on into their minds. It's like when I go to the movies, you have to realize that the movies is having uh, masses of people have the same dream at the same time. Now in movies, they used to have what you call subliminal seduction, and that's where the advertiser would put in one frame in the movie that uh, showed a Coke or a popcorn, and that would go directly to your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind wouldn't see it, but then it would cause you to go out to the lobby and buy some popcorn or a Coke. Uh, subliminal seduction is also did through the billboards that we see when we're driving along the streets and the freeway. We don't actually look at these billboards. These billboards go directly to our subconscious mind. And by the billboards going to our subconscious mind, when we go in a supermarket to buy one item, we end up buying 10 items because of the placement or what you call product placement. And the products that really are selling has the eye level shelf of the thing, so it, it directly. So you automatically reach for, for these products even though you did not go in to buy these products because you have been seduced before you went into the market. Now, I also noticed another thing about the supermarkets, because I'm reading, I, I was reading an article before I came to do this show on it's getting ready to be a strike. But I noticed a phenomenon that I can go to the big supermarkets and buy produce, but when I go to the local markets that are ran by, uh, I don't want to disrespect Latin people, Hispanic people, or, or people from South of America have the same food in there and it's cheaper. So I always buy my produce like bananas, oranges, and potatoes from the local supermarket because their food is cheaper. And the quality is the same. Not all the quality is the same, but when I buy the broccoli, when I buy the potatoes or the bananas, it's, it's the same quality that it is in Ralph. And, and Ralph and Vons and, and Market Basket is saying that, uh, you know, because they're bigger, they got bigger buying power, but they're not passing it on to the consumers. The only one that's passing it on to the consumer with their buying power is Walmart. So it's supposed to be in America, the more you buy, the less it costs. So it seems like these here big supermarkets, food prices should be less than the local grocery store in my community. But they aren't. Basically, when I have access to land, I plant a garden because the food that I have in my garden tastes much better than the generic food that they have in the supermarkets. I remember one time when I was homeless and living in the park, and I would walk through this neighborhood, upscale neighborhood, these people had an apricot tree in their yard. So in the morning when I passed by the yard, I would taste the apricots and the apricots were really sweet with a lot of fructose. And after I ate from this tree, I went to the supermarket to buy apricot. And when I brought this apricot, it tasted like cardboard. So ever since then, I have not ate another apricot out of the big three in California. Back again to the number three. Three times three equals nine. Nine is the nine eaters going before me to protect me, to dispel my enemies as they try to attack me. As I walk through the physical body and the embodiment of God. To me, in the Bible it says we are created in the image of God. And most people take it that we look like God. But God is not no woman or no man sitting up in the sky looking at me. In means surrounded by. When I use the word in, I'm in the car, I'm in the house, I'm in the boat. In means surrounded by. So I am surrounded by God. Another thing that I have is when I talk to Christians, they always say there's a war going on between God and the devil. And they always saying, 
uh, evil is trying to overtake good and good is trying to overtake evil. But out of all the spiritual books I done read and, and, and all the masters that I done read about, it's not about good destroying evil or evil destroying good. Because without neither one, you don't have balance. Just like a battery, I got to have positive and negative. So I think that evil versus good is something that's cooked up in the mind of man. Neither one will overtake the universe. You need both for the universe to exist. Then I ask most Christians, not attacking Christians, who created the devil? Did the de devil create itself? So then the devil is part of God because God created the devil. But now I'm back again to this music my friend Red Diamond is creating. He had to find an alternative to his lifestyle, and he discovered that he could make this music through using the existing technology just by sitting in his living room. So I'm very amazed that he's laying all these layers of music on top of each other and creating something that he never actually did before. And he didn't start doing this until he was about 50 years old. So the universe is actually simple. So as an artist, I come up with a concept and then I just start laying layers on top of each other until it creates an image that looks complicated. It's also the same thing like when I use Photoshop on the computer. I, when I discover what Photoshop is, Photoshop has 200 layers. And on each of them 200 layers, you also have three other things happening called middle, background, and foreground. So on one layer, I can create three layers on one. And then I take that and multiply it by, by 200. And uh, two times three gives you 600 different layers. So I start overlaying these things in the computer and then I did the experiment in the computer with my artwork to see if I can transfer what I do into the three-dimensional world into the cyber world. So then I just start experimenting. So things I would do in the three-dimensional world in color, I would do it in the cyber world. Then when I developed things in the cyber world, then, then I took what I discovered in the cyber world and started doing it in the three-dimensional world. So I became computer literate through my brother in the early 90s, and he had a business set up that he was doing out of his house called Max Facts, where he was making $95 an hour. So what I did as I uh, came, had access or learned this information, I came back to my community to pass it on, and it was very hard to pass it on to my generation because I'm part of the baby boomer generation, and we kind of felt intimidated by the technology. So 99% of us are not using the existing technology. So I start using the existing technology to my benefit and, and to not be afraid. So I'm using the technology of the studio and, and the computers and everything to create Snake Doctor's Cosmic Mumbo Jumbo. I use this technology to create the animation. I paid a friend of mine to create the animation that you see behind me. And he did it all in Photoshop before he had After Effects, Premiere, and, and all of these other things by hand drawing. A lot of people think that technology would, 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 would make the human species uh, obsolete. But, uh, you know, when I did this here music, I felt that I didn't need the musician no more. But you still need the musician in order to make the sounds and the beats in order to put into the computer or to program the computer. So most musicians, older musicians especially that play jazz, they do not like the rap music because they say there's no soul in it and it's not really music. But then I could say the same thing if I create art, but I embrace the technology and use it to my advantage. Lost my mind. And advantage come through, I learned to play chess when I was 13 years old, which yes. taught me strategy and which makes my mind work. I was looking at a program 
where it was this guy in New York that was teaching you 